Hello, friends. Do you love to travel and learn about new places and things? Great, then you are in the right place. Join Jasmine the cat and Gracie the tortoise as they have fun exploring the USA, the world, and beyond. Hello there, friends. It's Jasmine, the jazzy gray cat. Here is my bestie, Gracie, the super smart tortoise. Say hi, Gracie. Greetings, my good friends. It's Gracie here. Today, we're exploring Egyptian mythology. Cool! I loved it when we were in Egypt. We explored Egypt when we visited Africa. The pyramids were the best. Now, so far we've learned about Greek mythology and Roman mythology, which are both a lot alike, since the Romans copycatted a lot of the Greek ideas. I hope the Egyptians didn't do the same thing. Remember, Jasmine, the Romans did make those myths and gods their own by changing the names and the ideas. But you will be glad to know that the Egyptians had their very own gods. As a matter of fact, the ancient Egyptians had over 2,000 different ones. They called this magical family of gods the Egyptian pantheon. I am glad they had their own ideas. It will be so much fun to learn about them because their gods are super different from other people's. Get this. A lot of their gods had animal heads or blue skin or something else that was funky. That's right. And with so many gods, they had one for every part of their lives. Some gods protected people and kept them safe. Another one made the sun rise, controlled the weather, or flooded the Nile River so their crops could grow. There was even one to help bake bread and to protect you from wild animals. Gods also led people on a journey to the afterlife, after they had died, to a place of peace and happiness. All of these gods needed to be worshipped in order to have a happy life. Ooh, sounds like a lot of work to me. Greasy, how do we know about these gods since this was about 5,000 years ago? Remember all those pictures we saw in the pyramids? That picture writing is called hieroglyphics. By reading the pictures, we can go back to an ancient world filled with gods and goddesses, pharaohs, and mystical creatures. Egyptian mythology has stories of creation, magic, and the afterlife. Just like the Greeks and Romans, the Egyptians built fancy temples for their gods. But they didn't think their gods lived on a mountain like Mount Olympus. They thought the gods lived in the sky or in those temples that they built for them. And to make sure the gods and goddesses liked them, people would bring them gifts and pray to them. That's right. Now let's learn about a few of the gods and goddesses before we tell some myths. One of the most important was Ra, the sun god. This falcon-headed god flew his solar barge across the sky. I think you would have enjoyed a ride in it, Jasmine. The boat was covered with gold and jewels, and each evening he descended into the underworld to battle a serpent. At dawn, Ra would rise up, victorious, to bring the day once again. Wow, that sounded like a really tough job. But you're right, Gracie. I would love to have a gold and jeweled boat. I like Toughnut. She has a lion's head and was the goddess of water and rain. Her dad was Ra, and she was born when he spat her out of his mouth. Kind of a strange way to be born. I agree. Now, Osiris was the god of the underworld and the dead. He looked like a mummified man with a feathered headdress. He was often drawn with green skin. He was married to Isis, the mother goddess. She would protect and help people. She was a woman with a headdress in the shape of a throne. Horus was the son of Isis and Osiris. He was the god of the sky. He also had a hawk head. The king or the pharaoh believed that he was the god Horus living on earth. I have one more, and it's a real cutie, Beth. He was really small, a dwarf, and looked like a lion. He was super busy because he was the god of music, fun, babies, moms, 
nightmares, and scorpion bites. Sounds like a really good guy to know. But now that we know some of the gods and goddesses, it's story time. What myth are you going to share, Gracie? Well, Jasmine, as you know, myths and other stories show who we are and what we care about. My myth is a creation myth telling how Egyptians thought the world was made. Long, long, long ago, there was the god Nun, but that was all. Only water everywhere, as far as the eye could see. Nun had a thought, and that thought became the god Ra. Whatever Ra said happened. So Ra spoke, and his two children were born. One evening, as he was asleep, his two children decided to go for a walk, but they wandered too far away and got lost. When Ra woke up and discovered his beloved children were missing, he became so upset that he pulled out his eye and sent it to find his children. Now Ra only had one eye, so while he was waiting, he made himself a new one. But his patience was rewarded because, huzzah! The first eye found the children and brought them home. Ra was so happy that he cried tears of joy, and these tears became the first people on earth. Wow, Gracie, that was an amazing story. I wonder what Ra did with both eyes since he only needed one. I guess he had a spare. Hee hee hee. Now my story is a fairy tale that is super popular. See if you can guess which one it is. Wonderful. I just love a mystery. Once upon a time, there was a Greek girl named Radapis who had been kidnapped by pirates and sold as a slave. The other slave girls teased her because her skin was so pale and they made her do the yuckiest job. To cheer herself up, Radapis would dance by the Nile River. Her master loved to watch her dance so he bought her a beautiful pair of rose gold sandals to wear. One day, the pharaoh decided to have a big festival. The other slave girls didn't want Radapis to go, probably because she was so beautiful. So they gave her lots of work to do. As she was washing the clothes at the river, a falcon stole one of her slippers and flew away. Now the falcon was really the god Horus. Radapis ran after him, but she couldn't keep up. She was so upset. First, no festival, and now only one slipper. The falcon flew to the pharaoh and dropped the slipper right into his lap. The pharaoh knew this was a message from Horus and searched up and down the Nile River for the owner. When Radapis saw his barge, she was scared and hid in the rushes at the edge of the water. Oh no, the pharaoh was going to leave without seeing her. But at the very last second, he sees her hiding, and she tries on the slipper. It fits perfectly. Then she takes out the other slipper, and the pharaoh knows she must be his queen. Then Radapis and the pharaoh live happily ever after. The End Excellent story, Jasmine. That sounds like Cinderella. Am I right? Yes, you are. Turns out there are lots of Cinderella stories from all over the world. Who knew? I thought there was only one. You know, the one with the mice. Now, I'm ready for jokes. I think mummy jokes since we're back in Egypt. Here's mine. What did the mummy movie director say when the scene was done? I know. It's a wrap. That's a good one. Now, why don't mummies have hobbies? Easy peasy. They're too wrapped up in their work. My favorite fact was that there are over 2,000 gods and goddesses. I don't know how anyone could remember all those names. How about you, Gracie? My favorite fact was that the gods often had animal heads or blue skin. How about you, friends? What was your favorite fact? Don't forget to tell someone you love. That's right. You know what? I really like learning about Egyptian mythology. How about we learn more about ancient Egypt next time? That's a great idea, Jasmine. Count me in. 
super. I can't wait. Bye now. Say goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye, my dear friends. See you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining Jasmine and Gracie on their adventure today. Come back next week for the next one. Hello, everybody. It's Gwen here. If you want to know more about the places we visited, just go to our website, jasmineandgracie.podbean.com, and go to the sources page, and you can find out all about the great places that we visited. See you next week. Bye-bye.